get started early. I've got something I've got to share real quick. Good morning, everyone. I've got something to share this morning. We have got such a tremendous miracle that has arrived here this morning. Uh, the young man, Tyler, that we've been praying for, 17 years old, please stand. This is Tyler, the young man that God has, has moved on this young man in a mighty way that I just can't help but share this with you. But uh, as I've mentioned to Brother Jim, we do know that God answers prayers. We're so grateful for the miracles that God is continuing to perform. God is sending these people to us, believing that we will pray for people. And I truly, as I've said once in, and many, many times, that prayer does absolutely work. And I'm a firm believer in that. Since I've got your attention, could we all please stand and we'll go ahead and do our... I can't even remember what it is, but we'll, we'll do it. <laughs> all right, our pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp to my feet, a light into my path, and will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. To our Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again. To the American flag, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, if the young people doesn't have a song, I'll ask the choir to come on up, please. All right, let's have the choir.
go to 235.
Amen. As the choir comes down, everybody stand up and let's fellowship. As I mentioned earlier, we've got lots to pray for this morning, and we're so thankful for the miracles that God's already answered. We're certainly, certainly thankful for that. We have a few that, uh, that has asked us to remember them in prayer this morning. And again, I want to remind you, this altar is always open. Anytime that you have a need, or anytime that you want to praise our Lord, come do it. You know, anytime that you feel free to do so. Uh, Sister Renee, we want to remember her this morning, Brother Mitch and family and the kids. Sister Joyce Evans and Donna Helton. 
of Terry Wilson, David uh, Rector, Debbie's sister, Melinda's work, and Missy Ford. Do we have any others that needs to be announced today before we go to the Lord in prayer? Let's remember Lovell Jensen. Amen. Anybody else, please? Amen. Let's remember that. Anyone else, please? Your son. Amen. Amen. Anyone else, please? Yes, ma'am. We thank God for that miracle this morning. We sure do. Praise God. And we certainly want to welcome each and every one of you that are visiting with us today. Please make yourself at home. Amen. Amen. That's for me. Yes. Anyone else, please? Amen. Let's remember Brother Alex. Anyone else? Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, my sister came out Saturday night and said her thinking that she was going to be all pitiful and it was going to be bad. And she looked great at first, you know. Amen. Kind of <laughs> but I thank God for all his goodness. Amen. All his Amen. He's given her peace. He's given her comfort. I just, I just want to thank him. Amen. I say the same thing. I, I was sitting there listening to the choir. You know, before at one time, we didn't have no choir. What was it, eight people that we had two years ago? Look at us now how God has blessed us. We didn't have no children, but God has blessed us. We are so thankful that God has brought you with us. And we certainly hope and pray that God will bless you for being here. Amen. Amen. Who has an unspoken prayer request this morning? Let's all come into the altar this morning, please. Amen. May I have the men up for the morning offering, please? Brother Jeff, please.
Amen. The only, the only announcements that we have today is that don't forget tonight during our evening service, the, the youth will be presenting our Easter play, The Conversation. We certainly encourage each and every one of you that has the opportunity to come to please come. These kids, as well as the adults, have put their hearts into this, and we certainly want God to get the glory out of it. So please invite anybody and everybody that you can. Tonight at 6 o'clock will be our Easter play. Amen? Amen. Will there be anybody have a, a special song on their heart this morning? All right. As I kneel in the darkness, in the middle of the night, I'm praying for assurance, everything's going to be all right. Lord, I see another battle out in front of me. I don't know if I'll be able, and I'll go down in defeat. Then he said, do you remember where I brought you from? Just take a look behind you at far of where to come. And every time that you ask me, didn't I deliver you? So why would you be thinking that I wouldn't see you through? And he said, I walked on the water, I calmed the raging sea. I spoke to the wind, it hushed and gave it peace. Didn't I run to your rescue? Didn't I hear you when you called? I walked right beside you just so you wouldn't fall. Didn't I leave all of heaven just to die for your sins? I searched until I found you and I do it all again. Now you're talking to your father in a house that was once a home. So my bills are coming due, Lord, and three days are not that long. But then you hear a voice so soft and so. See, I right. moved like this before. I can do this little thing, and I'll give you so much more. He said, I walked on the water. I calmed the raging sea. I spoke to the wind, it hushed and gave you peace. Didn't I run to your rescue? Didn't I hear you when you called? I walked right beside you, just so you wouldn't fall. Didn't I leave out of heaven, just to die for your sins? I searched until I found you, and i do it all again. Abraham prayed for the day God would give him a son. Blessed Isaac was his name, the greatest gift he'd ever known. Then came the day, who would have dreamed? God would say, Abraham, give him back to me. On this mountain you it's you and Isaac, or it's me and you. So when I lay my Isaac down with a broken heart, but my father's proud. On this altar here he lays, just to find it wasn't him. God wanted me, most of us. I dare to say, have an Isaac standing in God's way. Yeah. On the altar, God will prove yeah. it's not your Isaac that he wants. Yeah, he Come wants on. you. So when I lay yeah. my Isaac down with, with a broken, broken heart, heart, but my father's proud. On this altar, here. Just to find it wasn't him. God 
God wanted me on this altar here he lays justified it wasn't him God wanted me Once I went walking down a long, lonely road, I thought I had no one who could share my heavy load. Then my mind went soaring back to a place I'd never been, and I realized I was standing at the foot of my king there were three lonely crosses on a hillside that day as i looked at my savior i cried lord take me away there was blood flowing down as the thorns pierced his head he cried, Father, forgive, and then my Savior was dead. As I stood there in silence, thinking, Lord, how can this be? That your beloved Son, he gave his life just for me. Then I heard a sweet voice say child lift up your head for the one that you see hanging there well he is not dead he's alive he's alive no death could not hold him he's alive he's alive on the stone was rolled away satan thought Jesus died on that tree. Oh, but Jesus came back from the grave and he won the victory. He's alive, he's alive. No death could not hold him. He's alive, he's alive. On the stone was rolled away. Satan thought he won the battle when Jesus died on that tree. Oh, when Jesus came back from the grave and he won the victory. When I look around and see the good things he does for me, I know I'm unworthy of them all. And his blessings he freely gives, I owe my life to him. i got so much to thank him for. Well, I've got so much to thank him for, so much to praise him for. You see, he has been so good to me. When I think of what he's done and where, He's brought me from, I've got so much to thank Him for. And sometimes while on this way I kneel, I stop and say, Lord, thank you for all you've done for me. Oh, 
pleased. Let me feel once more I've got so much to thank him for. I've got so much to thank him for, so much to praise him for. He has been so good to me. When I think of what he's done and where he's brought me from, I've got so much to thank him for. Amen. I believe everybody here can say that we can thank the Lord for how much he's done for each and every one of us. Every one of us. Anybody else have a special song, please? Brother Alex? <laughs> now I can hear a If you would come on up, please. Nobody else. Amen. Amen. Been good being God's house, is it not? Amen. Oh, what a blessed day it has been. Appreciate everybody being here this morning. If you're here for the first time, God bless you. Thank you for being here as part of our church service. Amen. Amen. Become part of our church family today. And I want to tell you, the uh, altar is always open. It doesn't matter if we're singing, preaching, testifying, whatever. Just If you need to come pray, come pray. If you're here and you're not 100% positive in your heart that you are saved, this altar is especially open for you. Amen. We will stop what we're doing to pray with you. Amen? Amen. Amen. How about Acts chapter number 27 in your Bibles this morning? That's where the Lord has led me, so... Uh, that's probably where y'all need to go. Acts chapter number 27, verse number 
All right, one verse. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. Father God, as we bow before the throne of grace, Lord, we thank you for what a blessing it has been to be in your house this morning for every song that was sang for your praise, glory, and honor. God, we thank you for each and every one that chose to come out here this day. Father, we pray for the power of God to be upon this message. Search our hearts here of those assembled this day. Lord, you know what we stand in need of. You know where we're at this morning. If there's any amongst us and all amongst us that has never been saved, God, we pray that this will be the day they just surrender. Father, we thank you for those who are here as our answered prayers. We thank you, God, for the miracles that are assembled in this building here this morning. And, Father, we pray for the words to say. Now, search out our hearts that we all may be obedient to you and your will this morning. We thank you. We love you. Giving you the praise, the honor, the glory for it all. It's in Christ Jesus' precious holy name we do pray. And amen. amen. Got a question should fit everybody in this church, especially the adults. Have you ever in your life felt like you were alone? I mean, you could be in a crowd of people, but there's nobody just like you in this crowd of people. Let's look at the Apostle Paul. He is on a boat. He is a prisoner. He's on his way to Rome to stand before Caesar. He's going to be placed under house arrest. Nobody else is a Christian on that boat. At least with the disciples, they all love the Lord. But now Paul is a prisoner. He's the only uh, preacher. He's the only apostle. He's the only believer. The only, he is the only one who represents the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a storm coming down that's going to tear the boat. The boat is going to sink. There's no loss of life. But yet, the best Paul can ever hope for is to survive this storm, swim on a piece of broken wood to, a land, to an island called Malta, get bit by a poisonous snake, take a few more weeks or months, and end up under house arrest for at least two years. Now, that's a good scenario. That's if everything goes right. Paul doesn't have an amen corner. There's no prayer group like we had this morning. Nobody's going to put their arm around him and say, Paul, I know what you're going through. I understand. We're going to face this together. There was no together with Paul, except for the fact that God sent the angel. Because I want you to understand something this morning. He said, there stood by me. Now, the Greek definition for stood in this is that to be near and to be ready if needed. If nobody else would stand with the Apostle Paul, if nobody else would help carry his burden, nobody else would show him comfort or compassion, thank God heaven knew exactly where he was and what he needed. I don't know who this angel was, but it was an angel that God had created, prepared, and sent with exactly what the Apostle Paul needed to get him through what he was going through. It's one thing to, to face a storm with a group of people. It's one thing to face a storm when you've got an amen corner and you've got your brethren with you and you've got your church family and you've got other believers. Face a storm when you're the only one that believes like you do. The only one that, that is of who you are. There was no church with him. There was no other disciples with him. There was nobody even praying for him at that time. But thank God, God knew where he was. And they said he stood with me. Stood means that he just didn't come in and go. Stood means that he knew exactly where he was. He knew who Paul was. He knew what Paul was going through. He knew what Paul needed. And to stand means that no matter what that one is facing, you're willing to stand with them and go through what they're going through and not bail on them when things get tough if God ever knew what it is that we needed it's to send at least one person that was part of our family that believed like we do that served the same God that we serve that said I don't care how bad it gets you're not going through this alone God sent a special friend he was heaven sent an angel that was for the apostle Paul and sent him in the midst of not when everything was going right not when revival broke out not when people were getting saved on every hand but thank God he sent him who he needed to get him through the rough times of his life that's where you need your friends 
That's where somebody says, I don't care if this entire world turns against you, I'll be right there with you. If you can look to your left or look to your right and there's somebody standing with you when everybody is turned against you and they're, they're rising up against you and the storms of life are, are just blowing every which way and you don't know how much longer you can stand it and thank God somebody familiar shows up and said you ain't never going to have to face this alone. I don't know how long it's going to take. I don't know how intense the storm's going to get. I don't know who the enemies are that's going to come against you but there's no such thing as coming against you as long as I'm here it's coming against us amen there's something about having a church family that there's no longer just you and your life anymore that's whatever you find yourself going through whatever the hardship is whatever form the storm takes there's an us and God said I'll never leave you nor forsake you he'll show up with an angel he'll show up with a believer he'll show up with a friend that a stick closer than a brother, but thank God somebody will show up. Yes. You'll never be alone as long as God's with you, amen. amen. My God, don't you feel the presence of God just make you want to shout all over the house this morning. He said not only did he stand, he didn't send that angel to the boat. He didn't send that angel to the crew. There was only one in their midst whose name was written in the Lamb's book of life. It was one called Paul. He's the only one that was saved, the only one that was called, the only one that was sent, the only one that was an apostle. He was the only one that was a chosen vessel. And thank God, God said, Send it to one man. Are you as important to God as the Apostle Paul was? Let me answer that. Yes, you are. It doesn't matter where you come from, what it is you're going through, what, whatever it is that you find your life growing up, whatever situation has been your life from the first breath you ever took, may I remind you that you mean just as much to God as anybody else will. So the Apostle Paul... And if you think your past keeps God from blessing you, you better think again. Nobody persecuted the New Testament church and the Lord Jesus Christ more than the Apostle Paul did. But God stopped him on the road to Damascus and he didn't light, bring him down with a lightning bolt. He forgave him right on the spot. He said, you're a chosen vessel unto me. Let the devil whisper in your ear. It's because of what you've done is where you are. May I remind you that the only thing the Apostle Paul did that caused him to be where he is is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes the storms are there for you because you're a believer, because you're one of his, because you'll stand for him and you're noticed by the others thank God that God shows up in the middle of the storms amen, amen. he said he stood by me he's Paul if he didn't know anything else at that time he wrote this down in the book he said let me tell you about the time in my life where I'm going I'm going to Rome I'm going to be under house arrest I ain't going to preach a revival my name ain't in the marquees they're not selling tickets for this they'll not be this amen corner for me they don't have the tabernacle of the church or the temple open so that I can preach I'm not even preparing a message he he said, I'm simply here because God saved me. I preach the gospel. I, pray, I lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And may I remind you that any time you publicly lift up the name of God and say, yes, I'm one of His. I've been seized, sought after me. I was the lost lamb that He searched for. He found me. And bless God, if you ever stand up and let this wicked world know, hey, bless God, I'm one of His. Amen. Just Go ahead and get used to it. Thank God he'll send a storm. That's when you know you are making a difference. Because if you're sitting around doing nothing, the devil don't care. You ain't making a difference, the devil don't care. It's when you start taking the Lord Jesus Christ with you and everywhere and say, let me tell you about my God. Somehow or another, the devil hates the name Jesus and the wicked fear it. But he said, he stood with me. Nobody else on that boat had an angel. Nobody else on that boat had a testimony. And may I tell you that nobody else on that boat had a Savior. Amen. Oh, but bless God, the Apostle Paul did. He said, the angel stood with me. 
He said, I know God's loved me. He said, he's just proved it yet one more time again. But here's the thing about it. By all appearances, dear friend, you want to know what? He said it looked like he was alone on the ship, does it not? Nobody saw the angel. Nobody saw heaven's representative. Nobody knew that God had done sent one from heaven specially prepared for just this time right here. That angel was standing. Paul knew him. Paul saw him. Paul said he was there. He gave him great comfort. He gave him a source of strength. And the angel didn't come empty handed. He came with the message. He said the boat is gone. They're going to lose it on this time. But there'll be no loss of life on here may I ask you what is more important than your life everything that you could ever work for everything you ever accumulated you ain't taking it to heaven with you anyway so what would it give if a man inherited this whole world but he, he did lot but he lost his life and he lost his soul may I tell you the only thing that you'll take to heaven is your soul amen and bless God Paul's saying he's saying it ain't it ain't about the money it ain't about the recognition what what it is about is that I know that God loves me enough that he sent an angel to me. The angel standing right before him and he came with the message. May I remind you that if you're here and you're going through a storm, God has an angel. God has a message. God knows who you are. God knows how to send it. And God knows what you stand in need of. Paul didn't care about that boat. Bless God, he cared about the message and preaching and lost souls amen Woo! glory that's what Paul cared about you see you had everybody said there ain't another one like him on this boat they had sailors they had centurions they had soldiers they had Romans they had, they had servants but they only had one preacher Bless God, may I tell you that when you're going on something that you ain't sure about, take a preacher with you. Amen. Number one, I ain't been nowhere in a while myself. If you Anybody got a trip planned to Hawaii? I am your man, I'm just saying. You just make room for one more, I don't take up a whole lot of space. I travel light and I can be ready in 15 minutes. They took a preacher. Now, I want you to understand, they didn't care about the preacher. They didn't care about his Savior. They didn't care about his God. But what saved their lives was the fact that they had a man of God. And when you have a man of God, you have God. And they put that man of God, and he wasn't nothing more to them than a, than a prisoner. But may I remind you, he was the freest man on that boat. He's whoever God sets free is free indeed. He didn't act like a prisoner. He didn't care. May I, may I just go ahead and tell you, if you read the rest of this chapter, Paul began, the, began to be the commanding man on that boat. He told them what God said. He had a message to preach. He had something. If you're on an airplane and they said, hey, well, this thing's going down, the man of God can stand up, preach the salvation message in a matter of seconds, and ever if that thing hits the ground, it'll hit the ground with saved people on board. He's in a boat. And they think that he's a prisoner. You got the veteran soldiers, you got the Roman soldiers, you got but you got the apostle Paul. He had a message to preach and a book to write. But he said this night. This night means that God had set one night aside. They'd done been through a storm fourteen days and nights. They hadn't even eat. It had gotten so bad they couldn't do nothing but hang on. But yet God said this night. This night. going through a storm for a while. Let me tell you something. A real storm ain't, ain't just a few, few hours. A, few, a, a real storm ain't just for one day or one night. A real storm lasts a while. God wants to make sure that we're hanging on to the only thing that the storm cannot blow away, and that's Him. 
And the devil says, I will wear you down. I will wear you out. I will get you to give up. But may I tell you this morning, there's no giving up on God. There's no giving up for a Christian. There's no such thing. And it's just went too long. It's too far. It's too intense. I, I tell you that the worst storm that this world has ever seen, God has walked through every single one of them. He's got His disciples through storm after storm. He's brought me and you through storms. They come in many different ways and fashions, but God will walk through every single one of them and say, bless God, is that all you got? And walk you through to the other side. It was when God set one night aside after they'd done been through that storm for a while. He said, I've got a message. The storm is about to end and here's how it's going to play out. Bless God, they're fearing for their life and they ain't got to fear for that. No harm is going to come and no loss of life. The boat, they're just going to have to write that off and build another one. But may I remind you, unless it's the old ship of Zion, don't you worry about it. They got other boats. We only got one God and one Savior. He said it was this night. What does this night mean? There was one on that boat that knew God in the free pardon of sin. His name is the Apostle Paul. Are you agreeing with me? All right, stand with me. We got a ways to go this morning. And the fact of it is, you know what that taught Paul? You know what that taught you and me when he wrote it in his book? God knows exactly who you are. That angel knew exactly who to go to. He didn't have to search for name tags. He didn't have to look up and look you in the eye. He didn't have to look at your birth certificate. He wasn't looking for your driver's license. When he got down to that boat, he went right straight to the apostle Paul. And he showed up not empty-handed, but he showed up with a message for God and God was about to tell him he's going to turn you loose number one God knows who you are number two God knows exactly where you are it was God that sent him to a boat he didn't have to hunt for him he didn't have to hunt for where he was at he didn't have to look and see if this was the right boat or not he knew the boat to come to he knew the man to go to and bless God he knew what to say when he got there may I tell you that God already saw the end from the beginning he saw the storm before it ever hit he knew the boat when it would begin to break up and float its last minute but thank God he knows what you're going through as well he knew that it was a storm he knew the boat was going to sink he knew there'd be no loss of life what I'm trying to tell you is this morning is don't you wake up afraid don't you wake up scared don't you wake up worrying about what you went through yesterday what you might go through today what tomorrow might bring my God is already there he's already knowing where you're at he he knows the message to send you. He'll bring peace in the midst of a storm. Amen. Woo, glory. <laughs> Not bad for 66 years old, is it? God saw the storm approaching before it ever got there. You see, what happened was the devil thought he could put a storm together that would outdo God. If I just put a storm, God can't see them. God don't have to have GPS. God don't need a satellite. God don't need identification. He could pick you out of a multi-million person crowd. If you were the only one that he needed to go to, he'd go, he'd go right to you. Anybody remember the old time at the doctor's office? The only thing that made the doctor's office tolerable was where's Waldo you ever done that until young people you ain't got a clue what I'm talking about you got to be old as me until some smart aleck would take a red ink pen and there's Waldo he looked like everybody in a crowd you couldn't find him it took a while I'll tell you what one of these days I'm going to preach I'm going to preach to a congregation you got to be at least 65 or older that way you'll know what I'm talking about these young people ain't got a clue. You say Barney Fife, and they say, who? <laughs> Let me go ahead, and I'm just doing that so I can get my breath. You see, God saw who he was. What, what God saw in Paul's heart without him having to say it was, I need help, and I need it now. There comes a time when you're just like the disciples. You've fought the storm. You've done everything you know to do. You've prayed every prayer you could think of. You've fasted. You've prayed. You've searched out the Scriptures. You've emptied out your hearts, and the storm raging just as much as it was before you ever said the first word to the first prayer. But God is, knows how much... 
and he knows when we're getting weak and he knows exactly when we need, when he needs us to show when we need him to show up may I say that God knew that he needed help and he needed it now and it wasn't because he was afraid of dying he knows heaven would be his home but God had a use for him that what took, could only take place in Rome are you with me and the fact of it is if you're surviving in the storm if you're surviving to the end of the storm that doesn't mean God's trying to get rid of you God is sustaining you because he has a purpose for you Amen. and we all appreciate our salvation in our life and our, our relationship with God much more after we've went through something like a storm do we not Amen. you see God knew he needed him that night and that night, they, of everybody that was on that boat, there was only one that had peace in his heart. Why is it when the world in a catastrophe begins to fall apart, but that one that knows God and the free pardon of sin, they're just, all right, buddy, we'll get through this. You ain't got to worry. God's took you. I promise you, God's took people through worse things than anything you and I have ever been through. So now he needs him this night. He came to him. I needed help now, and God sent help. May I also tell you that it ain't the first time God's ever had to rescue somebody in the midst of a storm, is it not? Do you remember the disciples? It was always when every time Jesus said, get into a boat and go to the other side, somewhere between get in the boat and the other side was a storm. They had their first, first storm that the Bible ever tells us about in the Gospels. And Jesus is asleep in the boat. They fought that storm till they were fatigued and they were afraid. They had fear instead of faith. And they finally woke him up and said, we're about to perish and you don't even care. Jesus stepped out of that boat, stepped on the bow of that boat, stood between them and the storm, and he, he rebuked the wind that caused the whole thing. The waves laid down. The storm was over. He calmed their hearts. They sailed to the other side. They went through it one more time again. And the fact of it is that he wasn't in the boat. He was in a mountain in a cave praying to his heavenly father. They were in the midst of the storm. They couldn't go all the way through it. They were stuck in the middle of it. They were held hostage by a storm. They did everything that they could do. But God loved them to the point. As the fact is that he walked on water because he knew his disciples needed him and that's how he chose to get there. He could have at any time uh, commanded the wind to blow them right back to where he was and he'd have stepped out on that boat. They'd have went to the other side but God says when you go through a storm I want you to understand when you can't see me I'm still there when you can't hear me I'm still there and I want you to understand when you don't see me you know that I am on my way to where you are and if you're in the midst of a storm in a boat at least the disciples had each other at least they all served the same God at least they all had the same belief at least they were brethren and members of the same godly family and they was that at both times but what if you're the only one on a boat and it's full of pagans it's full of people that don't believe it's full of people that don't care it's full of people that hate you because of what you do believe and you find yourself as the only one when you don't have somebody else in that crowd you don't have a never believer helping you may I tell you that thank God heaven is filled with believers he's got angels that believe in him he's got angels that see him every day he's got angels that love him and serve serve Him and are messengers of Him. And if God doesn't have anybody down here to help you get through the storm you're going through, thank God He'll empty out heaven and give you whatever you need. Woo! And the devil thought he had Paul separated. That's one of his favorite tricks. Have you ever known that? If he can just get you away from other believers, guess what? I'll get you to a place where you've got nobody to help you, nobody to look at, nobody to put their arm around you, nobody to pray with you, nobody to say, I know, I know what you're thinking, I know what you're going through. You don't have anybody else that has the same thoughts like you have. You're the only one. But may I remind you that he has a representative up in heaven that says, you're my voice. You're my presence. Amen. You're my words. You're my message. Amen. You're my inspiration. You're my strength. You're my peace in the midst of the storm. 
And, buddy, whenever we ain't got down here what it is, God's got it all up there in abundance. And God sent an angel. Had just the right words to say. Because one of the things that we fear in a time where it looks like we're going to lose our life, we fear losing our life. Have you ever even noticed that that fear is embedded in us even after we're saved? There's something about fearing death. All the while, the Bible tells us it's released from this mess down here and going into the presence of Almighty God. Nobody that's ever been saved has ever died here and entered into heaven wailing and weeping, wanting to come back. The glories of heaven. Has there ever been those that has went and entered to heaven that God has sent back? That's a testimony. Heaven's real. God is real. The angels are real. This book is real. You go back and you encourage them saying everything that they feared they don't have to fear. Everything they got to look forward to. Bless God, it's all here in abundance. Now let me just preach on. You see... God thought he could separate Paul into being the only one. Paul would fall apart. Let me tell you something. If you're plugged into the throne of grace, there's no falling apart. All your strength, all your encouragement, all your peace comes from the throne of grace if you're the only one there. Do you remember in that the demoniac at Gadara? There you go. You, you know what to do. I'm not preaching to mannequins. Shake your head. Let me know you're alive. The devil thought if he could put one man, fill him full of demon, a legion of demons, put him uh, living in a, in a graveyard, the townspeople all hated him. They tried to chain him. They tried to put him in, in shackles. They tried to keep him separate. They tried to keep him where he didn't have any influence. They, they put him in a place where they even hated God. The devil says, I've got him. Nobody can ever reach him. Until Jesus got in a boat and sailed to the other side. And when Jesus came, did he show up empty-handed? No, he did not. Jesus showed up, and the next thing you know, the man's fully clothed. He's in his right mind. He's got a home to go to. He's got friends. He's got family. He's got a testimony. What I'm trying to tell you this morning, church, is this. Is that don't ever think that you can be separated so far, God cannot reach you. Because he can And you're on a place where you're unfamiliar. At least the disciples, the majority of them were fishermen, right? They'd been in a boat. They'd been in a storm. They fished at night. Paul, he didn't even know what that stuff was. He's a teacher. He's a theologian. He's a passenger. You know what the devil tried to convince him of? Paul, you're nothing more than cargo. But then again, God says, let me tell you who he really is, devil. He's a chosen vessel unto me, is he not? He belongs to me. His father and my father are the same. Amen? And the fact is, he's my brother. And the fact of it is, is that he's saved. He's sealed. He's in the family of God. He wrote the majority of the New Testament. The fact of it is, he's a preacher. He's an apostle. He's the one that God sent to the Gentiles. Let me tell you something. The devil and the world may try to convince you you're a nothing. You're a nobody. You don't stand out. You don't count. You're no better than anybody else. You're less than most everybody else. But God died for for you he came to you he sought you out he saved you amen, amen. Woo! you are somebody with almighty God are you not Whew, boy howdy you ever been up here you're 160 pounds you're 66 years old but God gives you a message where you feel like you're 10 foot tall and bulletproof and I know I ain't because every time I start out that bulletproof and 10 foot tall road, he reminds me, this body reminds me of who I am. But the Apostle Paul was the most important passenger on that boat. Had it not been for the one Christian in a boat full of unbelievers in the middle of the storm, they would have all died and went to hell. You see, sometimes God puts you on the storm in the middle of unbelievers so that you can be the only light they see. 
you could be the only voice of God they hear. And if they've never been to church and if they've never read a Bible and if they've never really been introduced to the Lord Jesus Christ, you're all they've got. So don't worry and get angry at God because you're in a storm. You've got a hardship and things ain't going like you want them to. Because my God and the Christianity that I was burst into is not a bed of roses. You will suffer. You will go through storms. You will be forsaken by others and never by God. You will be put into places you wouldn't choose, but God chose that for you. God could have took him to Rome any way he wanted to, but he chose to put him on a boat full of believers in the middle of unbelievers in the middle of a storm and wreck the boat. He survives all that just to get bitten by a poisonous snake. You see, God, the devil didn't waste any time when they got to Malta, did he? He said, go ahead and build your fire. I don't care. In the midst of, fire, in the midst of all the firewood was an adder. And it amazing how people's mind can change and opinion change on a Christian. He got bit. He shook it off into the fire. They said, oh, boy, he's a devil. He didn't die. They said, oh, boy, he's a god. There's sometimes you and I are going to find ourselves in the mix of company. They're going to think we're one of the best friends they could ever have. And then somewhere along the line, you're going to say something about Jesus Christ or them. And next thing you know, you're going to be all the way down to a devil. It can go either way. What did the same crowd say once day on Friday, Hosanna? Jesus Christ throwing down their own coats and palm branches. Then what did they say right after that? Crucify him. We ain't got no king but Caesar. We just give us Barabbas. We don't want him. It can change, but may I remind you, God changes not. I'm almost done, I'm thinking. The angel of the Lord. Let me say one last thing about being on the boat. And this is important or else I wouldn't back up. You remember Jonah? Is he familiar? Yeah. Old Testament preacher. God said go to Nineveh. Jonah says I will not. God said go to Nineveh and preach and they'll repent and the whole nation will turn around. Jonah said I will not. I'll go the other way. I got the fastest ship money can buy. God, it's like the Titanic. God, you can't touch this one. It's bigger than you. You remember that when they built the Titanic? Even God can't sink it. Yeah. All right then. Next thing you know, there's a storm, is there not? And all we got one preacher on that boat. But the difference between him and Paul was not only did they throw Jonah overboard, Jonah was the cause of the storm. But on this one, they didn't throw Paul overboard. Paul was not the cause of it. Paul was the answer to it. They both suffered the same circumstances, but the reason and the motivation was totally different. You see, you're going to find yourself in the midst of a storm among people, and you're not the cause of it. You're the answer for it. Amen. Let me just preach on the angel of God. God chose me. Not, and people, we tend to think that sometimes God just chooses us for either greatness or he just chooses us for his purpose. Both can be true. But it's when God chooses us to be the uh, only voice in the midst of a storm surrounded by unbelievers, then all of a sudden you don't want to be God's chosen vessel. Am I right? Okay, now listen, we're going to establish something. It's okay to say amen even on the parts you don't like. Amen? All right then. Don't make me keep having to tell you. God chose him for this, this particular time. You see, when he couldn't get off the boat and he couldn't find a temple, a synagogue, a preacher, somebody to help him, heaven came to where he was at. I want to tell you something. Church is the best place you'll ever be in your life here on earth. Amen. I don't care what else is out there. But for the times that you can't get to this house of God, to this altar, 
you can pray wherever you are, and that same God who comes here will go to where you're at. Amen. Let me just preach on. Because ain't when the anchors of our own efforts fail, what am I saying? When you've done everything you know to do, when you've done everything that worked before, when you've exhausted all your faith, your strength, your effort, and the storm is still just as stronger, stronger, may I remind you that angels are not affected by the storm. Not just angels, but God himself will go through a storm. It don't even slow him down. Jonah didn't have an angel, but Paul had a heavenly friend. So I'm going to preach the Reader's Digest part, just the highlights and finish this, because we got a play tonight, and I encourage you to come out to that play. They have practiced hard and put effort in, and it is going to be a blessing. And bring somebody with you. Whose I am, he says. Listen, he knows who his Savior is. You can't be waffling back and forth between God and anybody else. And let me make this as clear as I can. Either God is your Savior or he ain't. It ain't God and, it ain't God plus, it ain't God with, it is God and God alone. Amen. And the God I'm saying ain't just God, His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He, Paul said, I know who my God is. Amen. These fellows go from one God to the next. And even when Paul was preaching on Mars Hill, he said they had one they didn't have a name for. The unknown God. Let me tell you, my God ain't unknown. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. And last week we celebrated the fact that he got up and defeated death, hell, and the grave and walked out of that grave very much alive. He saved me. He sent me. He chose me. He called me. He empowered me. He protects me. Paul was simply cargo to the devil, but bless God, he was God's apostle. It looked like Paul was surrounded by wickedness and unbelief. But I tell you, Paul was surrounded by heaven. Y'all are getting quiet like I'm the one preaching. You're the ones winding down. Let me tell you what to help everybody. If you get here early enough for Sunday school, they serve breakfast. And that stomach wouldn't be rumbling on you. And you'd not be looking at the watch thinking, Shoney's is open. You know what I'm saying? Get here early, you get breakfast. Let me just preach on. Because what God was doing, he was reaching out his nail-scarred hand. Notice this, and I am going to close. I've been fooling with you a little bit. I'm I just picking at you. When he says, in whom I serve, that means he's entirely devoted. Let me tell you something. This is just a word of advice from an old preacher. Been at this for a very long time. God will devote to you what you devote to him. If you are just in this just occasionally and you don't really serve him and you don't really commit your life to him, don't expect an angel to show up on your boat in the middle of a storm. But if you're totally devoted to him, God puts you where you find yourself at, serving him. And God said, I'll empty out heaven for you. Amen. You remember Stephen, the first recorded martyr in the Bible? Yep. Only two times God ever got up after he sat down on the right hand of the Father and established the throne of grace. Buddy, when Stephen was being stoned, he was a battle in heaven. God uh, got up, Jesus Christ got up out of that, off that seat, off that throne beside his father, went to the edge of eternity, held those nail-scarred hands out, and said, come on, Stephen, your trial's about over. Your pain's about to just be a memory. Heaven's opened up for you. What I am telling you is that if God meets you in the midst of the storm, he is going to welcome you. Amen. Finally, finally, do you remember when Jesus called his apostles to preach? Do you remember oh, Peter and Andrew and James and John? Do you ever remember a preacher tying his shoe? I'll tell you this. Do you remember first Jesus, he got on that boat and said, launch out just a little bit. He said, I want to preach. 
and that fishing boat became his pulpit, he was getting those boys used to what it would be like to have preaching where they used to have work. He was getting them ready to get familiar with that boat because they would no longer need to fish out of that boat. But that boat would be to get to the other side for God to preach and for God to save and God to rescue. May I tell you that when that angel came down and gave Paul a message, that was just like the Lord Jesus Christ showing up on a boat uninvited except by the Apostle Paul. He was on a boat filled with those who didn't know him in the free pardon of sin. And he was, it was God preaching off that boat. And Paul preached a message had they heard what he had to say. Forget the boat, it's gone. There'll be no loss of life. You know what God was trying to tell them? They were put on that boat for this reason here. It wasn't so that they could put great merchandise and make a payday. It wasn't to take prisoners to Rome. They went there anyway, so it wasn't their boat. It was to put them in a place where they couldn't say, I don't want to go. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to go to the revival. I don't want to go to this. He put them in a place where he had them where they were going to hear the word of God. And they couldn't get off that boat. And that boat was not destroyed till after the message was preached. You may have come to this church for whatever reason that it was this morning, but me and this church and God are glad that you're here. And God brought you to this church to hear this gospel. And this gospel is this. If you don't know one verse in this Bible, not even one, that don't matter. What your life is like today, what your life has been like, that doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is this. You have a God that searched you out. And he brought you here because he found you and he led you to this church. And he did so so that you'd be surrounded by believers in a loving church family that wants to see you saved as much as he does. And all you have to do is just say, God, I'm lost. I want to be saved. Miss Thoris, would you come to the piano, please? And it doesn't, don't try to overthink it. All you need to know is that you're not saved and you need to be saved. I will meet you at this altar. We've got people that will pray with you. And you don't have to leave this church unsaved. Amen. Put everything out of your mind, not even one excuse. Just know that you're lost and you're not saved. And just come to this altar, would you? Stand to your feet if you would, please. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Would you be honest before God and nobody will come back there where you are whatsoever? This is your decision. If you're here and you, you're not 100% sure you're saved, would you just lift your hand so we can pray for you? We just want to pray for you. If you're here and you've got a storm raging in your life and you're tired and wore out and you're about ready to quit, would you lift your hand? You see, hands are going up all over the building. Can I ask you not to go through that storm anymore like you are? Would you just make your way to the altar? Because just as sure as that angel stood with the Apostle Paul, God will stand with you in the middle of your storm, whatever it is. Would you bring it to him? While they sang, would you come on? Come on, we'll pray with you. Altar's open. Yes, God touch them as they pray. Anyone else? If you got a burden, don't carry it by yourself. Leave it here at the altar.
Amen. Has it not been good to be in God's house? People getting their burdens lifted, peace come in where they had storms in their life. That's what it's about. Anybody got a testimony before we dismiss? I mean, if you're tired of standing, you can sit. We'll be done here just in a few minutes. It's all God's time. He ain't got a clock in heaven. Oh, has it not been good to be in God's house? Amen. Glad you came out. All right, then. We got a special thing worked out with Shoney's. It'll still be there when you get there. <laughs> Amen. Anybody got anything on their heart before we dismiss?
Anyone else? Don't forget tonight, 6 o'clock, our youth have put together a fantastic play. Uh, they put a lot of work, days and hours into it, building these props. And if you'll notice, everybody was resurrected that came out of that side of the choir. <laughs> uh, they put a lot of effort into this, a lot of building props. And let me tell you something, we would not have a youth group were it not for a youth leader, for youth teachers, Amen. a youth director, the parents and the grandparents that bring their kids, and for the ones that go out and get them. So God bless you. That's what makes a youth group possible. Amen. We have been so blessed that we've went from three kids to over 30. Amen. And we're getting even more. And, and Tyler over here is going to start being part of our youth group starting Wednesday night. <laughs> and Regina, we just got to find a place for him. He wants to serve. Amen. 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 And in this church, we've always tried to make you a friend before we make you anything else. All right. Are all minds clear? Let's stand to our feet. Let's turn the kids loose. Yeah. All right. Come on, hey. There we go. All right, everybody ready? And I love.